All right, let's now talk about uh, Iranian elections where two candidates have indeed uh, dropped out of uh, this election so far, only six remaining. And uh, as I understand, we can talk to uh, Matthew Machowski, visiting research fellow at uh, Queen Mary University of London, and he's an experienced Middle East analyst. He's joining me from London right now. Matthew, are you with me? Hello, good morning. Uh, Good morning. Now, who do you think will be winning the election in Iran? (laughs) This is a question uh, nobody can really answer. Uh, My guess when it comes to Iranian presidential elections are as good as anybody else's, I'm afraid. Historically, uh, presidential elections in Iran have proven to be highly unpredictable and surprising to people both within Iran and the analysts overseas. So I'm afraid I can't give you a very straightforward uh, answer as to who is going to win the elections. You can definitely talk about who are the people you want to watch. And, would would uh, one of them be Saeed Jalili? Yes, indeed. Saeed Jalili, uh, the current uh, nuclear negotiator of Iran and the secretary of the Supreme National Security Council of Iran, is definitely uh, one of the front runners. Uh, he is uh, highly supported by the Supreme Leader. He is perceived by many to be the favorite of the Supreme Leader. This is obviously questionable because there is a number of uh, neo principalists as we call them, that are very uh, closely aligned to the Supreme Leader. But he's definitely one of the front runners. And um, he, he is also a um, not, he is also a choice that wouldn't necessarily make any difference when it comes to the nuclear negotiations with the West. It would be a continuation of the status quo. All right. Uh, what do you think would uh, actually happen should Saeed Jalili win this election? How do you think foreign policy would change of the country? Well, the foreign policy of Iran would certainly not change. Um, that It would definitely be a continuation of the status quo. Um, Saeed Jalili runs on a platform of resistance to the West. Uh, He is perceived to be highly ideological. Um, That's also the reason why he's preferred by the Supreme Leader. Uh, He doesn't, he's not very much concerned with economy. He is not very much concerned with uh, internal politics in Iran. In fact, uh, Saeed Jalili once said that we actually should, Iran should actually continue with the international sanctions regime because it does them good. In his view, international sanctions imposed on Iran make Iran reorient its economy and therefore see it as growing. So there is, there is definitely no, um, I, I wouldn't see there any change when it comes to their foreign policy. Matthew, do you think uh, that uh, the uh, the uh, global fears about Iran's nuclear program are they still in place, or has everyone pretty much calmed down? Oh, no, uh, these fears are definitely there. Um, the issues have been unresolved. Um, it is a dangerous situation. Um, we would, in the West, we would certainly want to see someone else win the elections, perhaps. Hassan Rouhani, who used to be uh, the uh, nuclear negotiator of Iran uh, between 2003 and 2005. And should he win the elections, uh, we expect that there would be some sort of a shift in, in, in respect to the tone with which the negotiations are held. Um, having said that, uh, one has to remember that the security issues, foreign policy, nuclear negotiations these things are the domain of the supreme leader the president is obviously very visible over the past few years many in the west have said well we can't really go on with we can't really move forward with ahmadinejad being in place but we have to remember that the president's position when it comes to nuclear negotiations is limited uh, so you think that he is the uh, most favoured uh, candidate for the West, actually, to be seen as president? Um, yes, uh, especially now that uh, Mohammad Reza Arif stepped down, which, in fact, is not only not surprising news, but actually a welcome news, uh, because this means that the so-called reformist or centrist team of followers of that team can actually unite under one person, and that would be obviously Hassan Rouhani. Um, 
And uh, Hassan Rouhani is definitely, although he is a cleric, he is a centrist. He is definitely not a follower of the Green Movement of 2009. He would definitely be uh, a preferred um, option for the West. All right. Well, uh, talking about candidates dropping out, what kind of uh, what kind of message did you get from from that coming? And do you think we will see any uh, possible further dropouts? Um, yes, indeed. Uh, this, as I mentioned, it's not. Uh, it's it's not a surprising news. Actually, really, it is a welcome news, both when it comes to Mohammad Reza Arif and uh, when it comes to uh, the other candidate, Hadda Dadel. Uh, Hadda Dadel actually comes from a coalition, they call themselves a two plus one coalition, with Ali Akbar Velayati and Khalibaf, the current uh, mayor of Iran, a uh, mayor of Tehran, sorry. Mm-hmm. And uh, when it comes to de- them stepping down, it actually is something we expected from the very beginning. When it comes to the two plus one coalition, then they actually stated from the very beginning when they formed the coalition that two out of the three candidates will drop down and only one of them will be put forward for the presidential elections. Uh, two still remain, uh, Ali Akbar Velayati and, uh, and the mayor of uh, Tehran, Kalibaf. And actually, there is a question now, is any of them actually going to drop down? Both Kalibaf and Velayati are strong contenders when it comes to ele- elections in Iran. Kalibaf is very charismatic. He's uh, extremely liked in Tehran. He has been seen as a very uh, good when it comes to economy, when it comes to his managerial uh, managerial skills. He is perceived to be a good person to put forward. Uh, on the other hand, Velayati has a huge um, experience in, 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 in politics in Iran, and especially when it comes to foreign policy in Iran. He is obviously one of the long-standing uh, foreign ministers of Iran. Mm-hmm. So these two candidates are still out there. But yes, I would expect further drops. All right, well, my final question to you, Matthew. Do you think there'll be the same level of uh, dissent and scandal around uh, as, as we saw in the 2009 elections? My first thought about this would be no. But having said that, as I mentioned at the very beginning, Iranian elections have proven historically to be highly surprising, unexpected. We really don't know what might happen. Um, The atmosphere in in Iran can really shift very dramatically, very quickly. But so far, I would say that this election is definitely not going to face the kind of situation we saw in 2009. The Green Movement, the Green Revolution is, is, is all but dead. Um, so unfortunately, uh, I wouldn't see any major um, discontent. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Supreme Leader actually also stated very, very uh, openly at the very beginning that should someone not accept the choice of first the Guardian Council when it comes to the candidates and then the elections, that would co- this would then constitute a capital crime in yeah. Iran. So a very, very clear message to the people in Iran. All right. Thank you very much for the insight. Matthew Machowski, a uh, visiting research fellow at uh, Queen Mary University of London and an experienced Middle East analyst. Thank you very much for that.